Hi everyone, Paul Akers and welcome back to the American Innovator. This week we're going to Oporto, Portugal. And my good friend Philippe and his father Tino invited me to visit a wine cast or barrel making factory. Now this is the only one left in the city and there used to be dozens of them because they used to supply barrels to the colonies of Portugal. But they opened it up on a Sunday just to show me how these things are made and you are gonna love it this. It looks like I'm in Alaska the way I'm dressed, but I'm in Portugal and it's a little cool day, but a beautiful day at Joseph Fair Wine Cast Company. So let's go inside and check it out. So here we go. We're going to go through the entire process with the owner of the factory. So first they take the wood and dry it for one year, then it goes on the jig here, and then they've got a bevel cutter right here, and it shapes it both this shape and the chamfer on it, and that's done on the shaper with the beveled blades right there. So they have the raw wood, goes onto the jig, gets the outside shape and the edge shape. So each level represents one cask. So you can see the 100 liters. So you see they've come from the shaper over to there and then look at, they're starting to assemble them right here. They put the top together and then they're gonna keep working it down. Okay, so we have a starting ring. And then notice this little jig he has here. This starts it off and holds it in place. Okay, so now let's see what happens. So we can pull that out. And he picks that one in. Oh, so we open it up and got a little more room for that last one. And then I'll continue to adjust the ring up a little bit, which allows him to fit it just perfect. Now I think we're going to get a hammer. So even the ring has been welded at a bit. You can see that's at a camp camper as well. And he puts on the next ring. The next ring. You notice it's got a little pounding lip on it. The edge there. Thank you. So now they start a fire there, put the cable around the bottom of it, and then pull it in. Wow. So the inside of the barrel, and then the barrel gets put on the lathe. You can see it fits on that diameter there on both sides, and the router bit goes around and creates the lip for the lid. So they fill it with hot water, boiling water, because the hot water expands and creates more pressure so it's easier for them to find the leak. Now they're testing for leaks. What's your feet called? hits it and it tightens up the joint. That's okay. <laughs> So 
So because it was on a Sunday, there were only a few workers there, so we didn't get to see it in full production with about 30 people making these barrels, and they're cranking out about 100 barrels a day. And they supply them to all over the world, very popular in Russia and in China. Now the interesting thing is, first the barrels are made for wine, and then after they've used them for four or five years, they get a little loose and maybe start to leak, then they bring them back to the factory, refurbish them, and then they go out as whiskey casks, so for other kinds of alcohol, but they make the perfect barrel first for wine, and then they get repurposed. Thanks, Philippe and Tino, for this amazing opportunity on The American Innovator. We'll see you next week.